I'm Bill Johnson. My guest today is Dave Coleman. And Dave is the founder of the Coleman Legal Group, a law firm in Lansing, Michigan. And Dave and I have known each other, I think, since the late 1980s. Um, and I've been, it's been a privilege of mine to watch Dave and be aware of the various different um, strong positions and, and accomplishments that he has had really at, at all levels, including up to uh, this Michigan Supreme Court and far beyond. And uh, so I, I've asked Dave to assist us, to assist me and, and perhaps uh, others uh, that would assist us to help, help us in, in dealing with the issue, uh, the growing issue concerning transgenderism and bathrooming as we acknowledge that this has become a rapidly expanding issue in public schools in Michigan and beyond. But Dave, um, as we begin, I'd like to start this way. So recently uh, in Fremont, there was a, a, there was a board meeting and there was a, a massive turnout of, of citizens, which really wouldn't be, I don't even think surprising to the school board um, or to the parents because this is a very family oriented community and historically has been now, of course, then for a long, long time. So the issue of boys in the girls' bathroom, girls in the boys' bathroom, and uh, and the, the whole matter of transgenderism, it just seems so, um, it seems so common, common sense that this is just not what our generations before us have done, and the generations before them, and the generations before them, and also the Bible because this has also been a Christian community uh, over the many, many years. And so yet here we are, we find ourselves in this place where the school board is struggling over this, over this, over this issue. Why would they be struggling over this issue? Well, they shouldn't be struggling over it, Bill. I think it's a pretty clear situation when you get right down to it. And as you said, it's common sense and it's science. I mean, you know, this... <laughs> This is something that's self-evident to anybody who looks at the situation. There are women, there are men. There aren't 75 genders as is the, you know, and however many they've come up with since the last time I checked. There are not uh, all these um, abilities to change men into women and women into men. That's just simply scientifically not true, let alone scripturally or, or based on just what we all can see and observe in our everyday lives. You know, chromosomes are not social constructs. There, you know, there are girls, there are boys at the local high school and the junior high, and they are anatomically one or the other. And so as we just saw recently in another state, four freshman girls at a high school in the shower and an 18 year old boy walks in takes all his clothes off and showers right, right along with him, right in the shower. And of course, uh, it's created an uproar, as it should. You know, the, the obvious problem here is, is that there just seems to be only one way of looking at this, and that's the way that's in favor of the transgender movement. And it totally rejects anybody who has common sense objections to that. And they are common sense, besides just the science uh, of it all. It's just common decency. And you have issues of uh, these children and what about their right to privacy? What about those four freshman girls and their right to privacy? Is that just run over because uh, a boy who's 18, who's really a man at that point, uh, comes out and says, well, I think I'm a girl today. And so therefore you have to let me shower with the girls. That's ridiculous. And I think everybody at just a basic common sense level understands that's ridiculous. Now that doesn't mean we treat anybody with disrespect or have a lack of empathy or care for the person who is struggling with these kinds of things. And so, you know, up until recently, there was mental health treatment provided for folks who had this kind of dysphoria, uh, gender dysphoria it was called. And so now all of a sudden it's not a problem I'm sorry, I think common sense and everybody understands it is a problem. And so issues of privacy, issues of just basic science, issues of, of religious beliefs and the rights of other people to not be forced to agree or be compelled to agree with a lifestyle or a way of life that is 
in violation of their beliefs is what we're talking about here. So those are some of the issues that are going to be clashing here. And, and this is why you're seeing parents and frankly, students standing up and saying, no, this isn't right. And then you get into other issues of, well, what about boys if they're transitioning or whatever into uh, the opposite sex or girls the other way? Um, they want, a boy wants to compete on a girl's team. And now what's going to happen? Are girls going to lose opportunities to play on the teams that they could have been on, but they got cut because three or four boys showed up to be on the team? And what about girls who are competing at the top levels and maybe would have won championships and lose those championships and lose out on scholarships and things like that? It's, it's, it's denying opportunity for girls. It's destroying Title IX. The whole point of Title IX that was passed 50 years ago uh, in, in our federal laws was to create equal opportunity for women's sports and girls in sports. Well, now that's being destroyed by the, this transgender movement. That's why you're seeing a lot of folks that are on opposite sides on many issues, feminist groups, things like that, who agree with us and are in agreement that, no, this kind of thing should not be allowed. And uh, there should be just um, protection for girls or for women in these areas. So, but Dave, uh, the concern seems to be like you, you mentioned Title IX, for example, and I've had opportunity to speak to uh, an administrator and others. Uh, and in great sincerity, their concern is the lawsuit that might come against them if there's a complaint mm -hmm. that comes from, a, from somebody that uh, a, is a transgender. And mm -hmm. so that, that fear of having to pay us a, a, a major suit of $1.87 million or whatever the figure is, it just, it scares them into holding a different position. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you find that to be true in your, in your work. What, what do you say to that? Well, I, the problem you have here is, I think the schools are gonna get sued either way. I mean, look what's happening in this school district where those four girls that I just mentioned had to, be in the shower with a naked man who was uh, 18 years old. You don't think they're going to sue? And, and there have been other situations where girls, women have been assaulted by men in showers and locker rooms. These sorts of things are fact. These have happened. You don't think there are going to be lawsuits over all of that? Of course there will be. There will be lawsuits over First Amendment issues, free exercise of religion, over right to privacy constitutional issues. There are so many things here where you're going to get lawsuits, frankly, either way. And so I think what school boards and other groups need to understand is they're, they're going to have to choose a side here. <laughs> they're going to have to come down one way or the other and then come down in the way that they think that they can best protect their organization from the lawsuit that's going to come whichever way. Because it's good. they're going to get sued one way or the other. And Dave, what I, I think one of the things that happens, and again, I, as, as I think you know, I was a public school teacher for, for 18 years. So um, I, mean, it's, I, I recognize the, the desire for a, a, a school leadership team, whether it's a board or a superintendent or principal or whatever, they, they want to protect their, their monies, their financial integrity. And that's, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, they also have pressures that come to bear upon them I'm sure that when school board members, before they become members, they're hearing from some educational group that's coming in and, and giving them warnings and counsel. Um, and certainly one of them is to be very careful to keep yourself in, from a position where you might be sued. And so they might uh, cite things like Title, Title IX and, and other, uh, other declarations that come from courts that put them back on their heels and they're, they're afraid to take a move into standing, not just for the integrity of the school, but integrity and the safety of their children and the, and the parents have voted them into office. What would you say about that, Dave? Well, again, they have to decide. They're gonna to have to make a choice one way or the other. And if they come down on the side that boys can be in the showers and the locker rooms and the bathrooms with girls, they're gonna get sued. If they come down on the side of no, we're not going to allow boys to be in the showers with girls or take spots on the girls team or be in the girls bathroom. And we're gonna do it at reasonable accommodation like having unisex bathrooms that are single use bathrooms, those sorts of things which could be reasonable accommodations. Um, 
you know, are, if they're if they're not going to do that, they're going to get sued by the transgender side. So either way, Bill, they're going to get sued. And so I think they just have to decide where they're going to come down on this. Dave, I have asked you for assistance just within the last couple of days, and uh, you you responded by sending me an issue brief that's titled "Public School Transgender Policies." Public school transgender policies, and that's uh, as I read through this, I, but it seems to cover a great deal of bases here. What are some of the things that I, I know that the I, I know that this our school here in Fremont are looking for alternatives to just letting the, the the powers that be basically keep them on their heels where they're afraid to step into basically doing the common sense, doing the right thing, following the science. And um, But what kind of protections or legal counsel can you give to them that would buck them up if, if they need that or encourage them? Well, I think they need to adopt a policy and they need to hold public meetings and hear from all sides hear from parents of trans children, hear from parents of other children who are gonna be subject to their privacy being infringed upon. They need to hear from everybody and then come up with a policy that somehow tries to find a middle ground. Like I mentioned about the only middle ground that I've thought of in this situation is to have separate facilities for trans children that would not infringe upon the rights of the other children but also provides them with uh, uh, set with facilities that are appropriate. Obviously, that's going to cost more money potentially to a school district or to whoever is putting those kinds of accommodations in place. But that's the sort of thing they have to do first: is hear from their communities and hear what they want, and then try to come up with a policy that they can put in writing and and ever, let let everybody know what the rules are going to be. Um, I, I'll tell you, I think you're going to see an exodus of kids from the schools. If, if they start allowing, if this becomes the norm where an 18 year old boy, man can come into the girls showers and shower with freshman girls, you are going to see parents pulling their kids out of those schools left and right. It's already happening since COVID started millions of students. I just read about it. I don't know if it was the Washington Post or New York Times. Somebody had a big article on it the millions of school children that have not returned to the public schools. And it's over these kinds of issues. Well, that's just gonna speed up and become even worse for the schools if they just disregard the common sense, science-based concerns and religious concerns of parents and kids over this issue. So if they're gonna take a small minority and impose their beliefs and impose their, um, um, system on everyone else, be prepared for the for the consequences of that. They might not have to worry about getting getting sued if they lose 20, 30, 40 percent of their students. Um, that's this has the potential to cause that kind of problem for the public schools big time. Dave, can you tell could you can you name a, a few public schools in Michigan that have done that, that have developed a policy in our and are basically standing on that? I, no, I think they're all looking at it right now. We've been talking with a number of school districts, some that have had conservatives now in the majority in those school districts, and we're helping them, and they're in the process of starting to develop a policy to do that. So we're helping some school districts around the state to do that right now. But essentially right now, most school districts are being told they don't have a choice. They have to do this. Title IX rules and regulations, the law says, that's baloney. This is not a decided issue under the law at all. And so these are the sorts of issues that are going to be litigated over the next few years. And as I said, whether your district or not becomes the one that, that becomes subject to a lawsuit, who knows? But you're going to see lawsuits around the country on these issues. And probably until the U.S. Supreme Court weighs in and comes up with a decision, nobody's going to know what the real settled law is until that happens. And if the Supreme Court allows this sort of thing to continue and, and men being in the showers and bathrooms and locker rooms of women and girls, like I say, that will not be accepted by the majority of our country. And you can say what you want. The media can say what they want. They can call everybody all the names and, you know, slander everybody all they want. That will not be accepted. 
and kids will be pulled from these institutions and they won't go, they won't participate. And so you wanna talk about being divisive. You wanna talk about causing division within our community. Adopt policies like this and see what happens. Dave, when I think about this, this whole matter, being a former public school teacher myself, a position taken for just allowing boys and girls bathrooms and girls and boys bathrooms at the elementary age, high school age, whatever it would be, it just smacks of, of great distortion, great, great concern, great, you talk about education, these young people, are, it's gonna just confuse them even that much mm -hmm. more. I mean, we are hearing that there are increasing numbers of kids that are becoming you know, confused, this gender dysphoria. And part mm -hmm. of that is because of the fact that our, our, our society, starting right with schools, have just simply, I don't like to use the word held the line, but I would say do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just very difficult for me to comprehend a town like Fremont not having a majority of board members that, are, that would be willing to just say, these are our children, these are our grandchildren, these are the parents that, that are showing up and that, that care so much. What are we doing here? It seems like this would be a time where it would be imperative for them to simply do the right thing, draw a line in the sand, develop a policy. And can you give us an idea about what that policy statement might look like just off, off, your, off the cuff? Yeah, as I said, I think a policy that, again, respects everyone. We don't want any child to be demeaned or ridiculed on either side here. Um, children need help. But as we say in that issue brief you mentioned, and we, we put on the end of that, uh, there's a pediatric, a national pediatric organization that has looked at all the studies in this area. And anywhere from 85% to over 95% of children who have these feelings, if they are simply left alone and not encouraged or affirmed in this sort of thing, um, will we'll be, you know, a few years down the road, will be you know, back to being a boy or a girl or whatever. It's very few children where this becomes more of a lifelong issue for them. But because of what's happening in the schools now and what's being taught and the requirement to affirm everybody in their beliefs, um, you know, this is now exacerbating the problem. It's making it worse. And, and so I think, you know, a policy that just makes it clear that we're going to go based on biological sex and the facilities and the teams and everything, you know, is going to be based on that uh, in our school system is something that's reasonable and you can have accommodations through, like I say, either unisex bathrooms or other showers or other areas where trans students, if they don't feel comfortable being, if it's a boy who's, who's, who's transitioning to a girl, doesn't want to be in the boy's bathroom, then give them an option, give them an alternative. But you don't force that indecency, honestly, the indecent exposure the you know lack of privacy and everything on the vast majority of the 95 other percent of the children in those in those schools that's not the answer uh, it's not the answer to break down the frankly the morals and the the good privacy limitations that we all instill in our children this is being broken down by this and that's why i say parents are not going to accept this there'll be a small percentage that will because they want this but the vast majority will not accept it. It will, it will not be a place where, for the most part, people are going to want to send their children. Right. And that's very heartbreaking thought. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's certainly something that needs to be so deeply yeah. and seriously considered as a board yeah. member and administrator. Yeah. I see this having the potential to really be very so divisive that it, it it could, in effect, destroy our public school system. I mean, what are you going to do if half the kids don't come anymore? And, and now they're homeschooling. They're setting up other private schools. They're just not going to be there. What, what does that do to a community? I mean, I don't think anybody wants that. But that's what's being, you know, people will not accept this being rammed down their throat in violation of their beliefs 
And frankly, even you don't have to have a particular religious belief. Everybody just innately knows <laughs> that these are just common sense, basic decency types of things here that we're talking about. And so when government starts to try to take the position, well, no, not anymore. We're going to change this. And now you just have to accept it. No, uh, you know, we're not going to accept it. And I don't think the vast majority of people will accept it. David, as we move towards closing, again, dealing with the issue of the fear that some, some of the school board members may have about a, a lawsuit, what, mm -hmm. what counsel would you give to them? What, what if they are sued? What, what, mm -hmm. Where can they turn? Is there a place where they can turn? I, I, sure. What would you say? Yeah, well, first, don't be afraid to do what's right and proper for all the kids, not a little tiny minority. And you should not, you know, we always hear all the time, don't impose your beliefs on anybody else, right? We're told that as Christians all the time. Don't impose your beliefs on me. Well, what are they doing here? They're imposing their beliefs, their lack of belief, whatever you want to call it, on us. And they don't seem to have a problem with that at all. And so I don't think boards need to be afraid to do the right thing and to take a stand, number one. Number two, I think you do it in a way, like I said, come up with a policy. We're helping some districts do this that puts, tries to put some accommodation in place to try to, uh, you know, we don't want to, like I say, impugn any child at all or make them feel somehow second class either. But these are children that need our help and sympathy and empathy, not affirming of a lifestyle that is going to hurt them for the rest of their years. I mean, this transgender lifestyle, if you carry it out to its conclusion, I mean, you're talking about castrating boys. I mean, let's just be blunt here. You're talking about surgical procedures that are cutting off perfectly healthy and good body parts of children. You're talking about giving them medicines and hormones that sterilize them, that will affect them for the rest of their lives, give them things like osteoporosis, all kinds of medical problems. And these, these, you know, blockers that they talk about as if it's not, like it's candy. You just take this medicine. It's no problem. They are going to have lifelong problems and early death from these sorts of things. And yet we're treating it so cavalierly. I think a school board needs to take a stand and do the right thing. And again, be as prepared as you can for the lawsuit that could inevitably come. But I frankly, again, I, I think they're going to get sued either way. So I guess you just got to decide as a board, which side of this issue do you want to fall down on? Which side do you want to come down on? Dave Coleman, thank you very much. You've given, I think, a great overview of the situation that, um, that, we, that we face as a, as a society, as a culture, as a community. Dave, can you give your, give your uh, information as to your office, your location, sure. your phone number? All the yeah, we, we have a Great Lakes Justice Center, which is our 501c3. It's a nonprofit legal group, and we represent a lot of folks on constitutional issues. And uh, the phone number for, well, actually, we have a website, greatlakesjc.org. And so if you're interested, you can contact us through greatlakesjc.org. And then our law firm, where we represent school boards and some county boards. Now we're representing some county commission boards, things like that. Uh, is Common Legal Group, and it's commonlegal.com is our website there. And our phone is 517-322-3207 for Common Legal Group. Repeat that again, that phone number, would you please? Sure, 517-322-3207. And you're based in? Lansing. We're out mm -hmm. of Lansing. Okay. Dave, I really appreciate your time and, uh, and your years of service. Thank you so much. Well, you too, Bill. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you.